in the new Africa, one more independent country, the state of Uganda. At Entebbe Airport, Prime Minister Milton Obote and His Highness the Kabaka wait to greet the Britannia, which brings the Duke of Kent to represent the Queen at the independence celebration. Uganda became independent in 1962, and during the first decade of independence, the country received substantial aid. That changed when Idi Amin took power in 1971, and aid only picked up again when Idi Amin was toppled in 1979. Aid really became significant in Uganda's history after the fall of Idi Amin and the beginning of the process of reconstruction. So from around 1980, that's when we became very familiar with, uh, with Western aid and looking at Western NGOs and development partners of different kinds. So from around 1980 to the current day, aid has been very important in the development of Uganda. Um, at, at some point, uh, aid was contributing something like 50% of the national budget. Uh, that has gone down in recent years to something like 30%, but that shows you just how significant it has been over time. When Museveni came to power in 1986, an era of political stability and good relations to donors started. Uganda then became to be known as one of the blue-eyed boys of the donor community on the African continent. And I think it was Uganda and Ghana. And for a long time, Uganda has had very good reviews internationally as one of the really leading reforming countries on the continent. The good relations made Uganda an early test ground for what was in 2005 to become the Paris Declaration on Aid Effectiveness. Since 1997, Uganda was pursuing a poverty eradication policy. And uh, there were partnership principles that were developed then. And in 2003, these partnership principles were agreed upon formally between development uh, partners and uh, our government. And in 2005, these principles were incorporated within the Paris Declaration. The early pioneering role of the Ugandan government is also recognized by Ugandan NGOs. In fact, Uganda taught many countries many things. The Poverty Eradication Action Plan, for example, is an invention of Uganda. For the Ugandan government, the new principles signaled a new era in its relations to donors, or as they were now to be called, development partners. The advantages of these uh, principles are that they place the ownership of policies and programs with the recipient countries. So that it is not a matter of them, donors, but it's our business. So we own the policies, we own the principles, then it puts us in the driving seat. The Uganda country evaluation confirms that the coming into effect of the Paris Declaration has strengthened government of Uganda's role in relation to the donors. The Ugandan government has grown stronger over the years in its demands, in its analysis. Um, so they are able to hold to what they want as opposed to what the donors probably want. Several observers, though, agree that in recent years there have been signs that relations between government and donors are not quite what they used to be. Right now what we see is probably not as much uh, innovation or not as much opening up. We see that, yes, government is doing quite a lot of work on its own. Donors are also doing a lot of work on their own. For example, now you have many donor subgroups where only donors sit. And then you have government also coming out with its own working groups. And yet, before, we used to have lots of public-level consultative meetings of the two. Indeed, the country evaluation notes that a certain aid effectiveness fatigue is emerging in Uganda, and there is a need to take action to reinvigorate the aid dialogue.